Hello everyone, I am surviving quite uh, interestingly. Um, this morning there were two guys outside, and anybody that ends up going outside, they end up kind of standing there for a while and just sort of watching me. Um, and they'll pose in their guises to look normal, but it's like they haven't got through their head that I understand that every person standing there is um, doing something at this time. Um, so Cryon told me, go outside and tell them to go away, but it's okay, I'll do it. And I okay, and so I went outside, and first I was just sort of pissed off, and he said, just look, look, let me talk, okay, let me talk, don't, then don't act all pissed off at them like that, um, and then he, he started talking, um, and he actually told them, it's like, like, different voice and everything, it's not, this is, this is not, you know, the person that you're thinking of, this is crying on a magnetic surface, and he used the, op he used it as his opportunity to start preaching a basically, um, like, about God, uh, about, um, uh, about, he, he started saying to this, the one, he wanted to focus on one of the two guys, very specifically, and even though it addressed both people, he really specifically went to one, and said how, you know, why has God chosen this girl? Why, what, what, what has, why is, why has God done this? How is that possible? And he's, I don't remember exactly all of what he said, because if you're actually really channeling, you don't quite remember all of it um, at first, if you are if you haven't been doing it for a while or whatever. Um, so it was like he was, he was telling the guy um, that I asked for help, that I did um, the the work, basically, but doing the work doesn't mean physically going out and like working it it means like uh mental work and some physical work like adapting your physical body to new different things like eating only vegetables and um rice and stuff like that you're being a being a vegan or um becoming vegetarian or s uh, slowly moving towards that i should I should attempt to help people with with that. Let's let's work on that one while the plane flies over. Um, so help people with. Um, Kron says don't don't even mention them when they fly over because that's doing that. Okay, so I won't mention them. Um, so what did I do to become? Um, to, first I first what I did is I became vegetarian. Um, so to become vegetarian, first. Stop eating red meat. If like if you like steak, first cut down on the steak. Um, or if you can just eliminate it, eliminate it. Uh, most people can do this, and it's just a matter of oh, I like at the hamburger. I don't need to have the hamburger. You, most people can can usually do this. So then after that, you know, go to eliminating pork. If if you already don't eat pork because you're kosher or something, then then you got no problem there. Um, then from there like chicken and from there fish that was the order that I did it in um, and then after fish when you drop off fish then you can be vegetarian which is technically eggs and milk products or dairy products still in there and then going like making the jump to vegan can be not, it's not hard to do, it's just confusing, because it's doing things that you're not used to doing before. Like, instead of using butter, you're using nut oils. It's just the same thing, and they taste just as good, pretty much. Um, it, the same type of concept, it's nothing hard. It's just, um, like, like olive oil. Like, uh, instead of putting butter on your stuff, you put, like, different versions of olive oil on it, but it's, like, walnut oil or avocado oil, or like different, um, almond oil, or whatever kind of, um, different sort of oil. Um, then, um, how, uh, one, one thing I noticed that me and several other people do is use the, um, the Garden of Life products, which, uh, I almost died with, um, the Bob Marley one, because that's kind of, like, key-coded to, um, kill off a pesky starseed, but, um, 
was really funny. Cryon told me, okay, I want you to go and actually make that and start drinking it. And I actually made it, stood over there, like the counter, you see, and I held up the glass, and it was the middle of the night, and I couldn't see anybody, but I knew. I'm being watched through the window. There's audio or something in my house. This, the, uh, It wasn't the speakers. I know some of it was in my computer speakers, which I threw out um, because of that, because the, the, the covering over the subwoofer literally burst off of it. And then when I looked at the thing, I saw that it said Masonware on it, and I was like, oh, God. I actually picked these myself, and I didn't even notice that it said Masonware on it. And I did that when I was 15, 16 years old. Um, so uh, I hold up the glass, and then, like, hello, I'm drinking this, you... <laughs> I'm drinking this. And then bring it down, and then, I'm you know, s stir it, and... Crown says, okay, I want you to just take once I want you to take one sip. And I take take one sip. Okay, I want you to take another sip. And um I don't know, I took several sips and I started to feel like problematic in my body. And then he said, oh, okay, now stop. Stop now. Okay, now stop. Um it would, it would, and the same thing he would do with, uh, like, there's a brand called, um, Ruby, or, uh, not Ruby, that's one of their, one of their types, called Drink Me, like, um, like, well, like Alice in Wonderland, or like Reptilian, Obey Me, Serve Me, Drink Me, um, I accidentally fell for that without looking at the label and realizing that the water was, like, that it was 7%, um, water in there, and I just knew it was, like, fluorided, I just, and I could tell from the labeling and everything, and I was like, uh-oh, it's like, hey, Crying, can I even drink this at all, do I have to throw this out, and he said, I want you to, to take a couple of sips from first that red one, then later that green one, um, that, that, that you have these juiced drinks, um, so I take a couple of sips from the thing, and I, I, I noticed it distinctly would affect me, but um, now whatever is going on, like, I just drank some of the, well, actually, I think I had chai flavor, but I have the Marley coffee still, and it's almost out, and I'm getting upset that, I, that I'll run out of it because it tastes so good. Um, and it was, like, what almost killed me in a few sips. And I know the difference, the only difference I could find in it was vitamin C, technically, but on, on, that's on the label, if we're thinking, like, like labels. Like, in South Africa, if in South Africa, no one could trust a label. If you were smart, you did not look at a label to figure out what was inside, you know, something. You had to look at the actual product to try and figure out what it was. Um, so, uh, and, uh, other, so it was funny, funny, funny thing. Um, I was trying to figure out what to do this morning because of all this interesting interesting ascension stuff, and, um, I said, you know, Kron, what do I do, I mean, it rains outside, and then I come inside, and you know what's going on inside, and then, and then I walk outside again, and then, uh, and I, um, you know, the whole time, I just kept kind of hearing Bob Marley say, I'm gonna be iron like a lion in Zion, and which is what the funny, um, which not, this is not funny, but, which is what the kill you Bob Marley drink does, but I think they could actually maybe do that with any of them, or, um, because it, it has to do with energy and magnetics, too, it's not like someone, anyone would just, if you drank the Bob Marley raw, you know, raw energy, a garden of life, garden of life, you know, raw, um, raw protein thing that you would drop dead, it was like some, something that had to be combined with the other things that I was exposed to, something, it was like something like that, that caused, it to be problematic somehow, um, or something to do with how my system, the things that had been in my system up until that point, um, so, strange, um, and so I'm asking, what do I do, I'm tired, I realize I can't go to sleep, well, or at least not yet or something, what do I do? And he says, "Oh, go watch them. In fear and loathing, yeah, fear and go watch Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas." And I, 
what? And actually, at first he didn't say that. At first he said, go watch that Swedish movie you have called Snabba Cash. Like, quit, quit cash, um, basically. And I'm like, you mean the gu- the chicken wings and the <laughs> and whatever they're doing with the border of Norway and that? And he says, yeah. And um, I was like, oh, I was so tired that I just didn't, I was like, I'm, oh, I can't do this, so instead I go, and I see Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, and he says, well, you can watch that one instead if you want, that, that one would be fun, and so I start watching it, and he is, like, they are saying stuff in there that is so funny, this, I believe this movie came out one year before The Matrix, so The Matrix came out in 99, I think this was 97 or 98, and so they go in order, in this, in this order, uh, on my Facebook, put up everything that I would hear. And I'm not even, like, halfway through the movie, I don't think. Um, and I didn't even, like, put everything there. But, uh, he says, um... Yeah, he, he, he says, I, I was in the middle of a fucking reptile zoo! And someone was giving booze to these goddamn things! <laughs> and that's pretty funny if you know about that. Um, and then, um... He says, uh, there's... there's <laughs> There, there's an electric snake coming for us in the sky! <laughs> and, uh, what else does he say? Oh, then this is really, at the same time, when he's saying there's an electric snake coming for us in the sky, um, the photographer, right, opens, is there in the hotel room, this is the hotel room scene, where they've gotten to their hotel, right, after the drive from bar, we're in the bar, bar store, in the middle of the desert, you know, that everyone knows, and then yeah, they get to their hotel, they're going in, they're, we're in the middle of a fucking reptile zoo, man, you were screaming about reptiles, I got you out of there, um, and then someone knocks at the door, and he says, <laughs> there's a snake coming for us, and, okay, the guy, um, the, a the actor, who is also not really acting, I can tell, um, comes in there and says, uh, hi, I'm Lacerda. He says it twice, actually two times. He says, he says it twice, um, which is like special satanic number. Um, he says, oh, hi, I'm at the door. He says, uh, I'm Lacerda, I'm your photographer. And then he comes in again. He says, hi, I'm Lacerda, I'm your photographer. And I'm like, Lacerda, the pho your photo- What? <laughs> what? <laughs> you guys, oh my. And then, and then, and then after that, he's talking about, um... San Francisco, San Francisco, um, what was, uh, kind of, kind of sad in there, but he, at first he's talking about how he was in San Francisco, I think it was at a place called The Matrix. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I'd, I'd call all of us, all of us in The Matrix, right? Um, and then, um, he comes out of his, like, reverie, which was actually, like, DMT-induced or whatever, and he comes out of it, and he's saying, you know, being a part of San Francisco in the mid-60s was a very special time in history. There was nothing that would ever take that away from us. And it was as if the universe was on our side and nothing could stop us. There was something right and true about what we were doing. And no one could take it away from us. But in Las Vegas now, if you look west on just the right day towards San Francisco... You just might see the high water mark where that wave came up and fell back. Where the people revolted and they got squashed. But that's not going to happen this time. It's, it might kind of take a while because in order to actually stop Agenda 21, it had to happen right before it was going to happen. Or else... That I guess it would have been too hard to do because of how um, they because of the extent of their telepathy. In order to fix it, the person doing it would have to have practically no idea that they're doing it, or have like one second's notice, so that anyone who tries to quote hack back doesn't have a head start. Or ideally, you don't really even know what you're doing until the middle of it, which is kind of what happened, like the middle of it, or after you're done, um, and, um, I, I noticed that that works effectively, as long as, as long as you manage to actually end up doing the, doing the right thing, not knowing what, you, what the heck you're doing seems to work, um, as long as it's not 
mindlessly trying to kill people and have sex with Satan and stuff, it, uh, you know, that doesn't, that doesn't really work. Um, it's so fear, fear and loathing. Uh, fear, fear, I think fear and loathing, so fear and hate in Las Vegas. Okay, the Las Vegas sounds like a bad place to go. Oh, it's known for gambling. Oh, uh, that, and reptilians love to gamble. Uh, if you, and if you're, in case you're a normal person watching this, which I kind of doubt, but if you are, that's awesome. Um, if you identify yourself as human, um, that would be nice. Uh, I think from here, so what have I had to do today? Stuff Crown says don't describe, but I did a good job. Um, healing things like healing and things that don't describe it, uh, really, but that you did a good job, or that you're doing a good job, um, and, um, <coughs> also, the, I basically, I asked him, um, last night, can you help me with, like, being stressed out, because since I'm stressed out, I'm wanting pot or benzos or something to calm the stress down. Can you can we do something about this please? Fi I it finally occurred to me that I could that I could ask for help with that. And I don't know what the heck he did, but um it was I I think it was him telling me to just go outside completely exposed the way I did and the way it created so a certain surge of energy that after I came back from that uh, since then, it's like I haven't wanted anything, even even though the police showed up and and uh, whatever. Um, even though I didn't even do anything, I was back in my house, and then like 20 minutes after I've come back into the house, um, the like 20 minutes after I'm back into the house, then someone calls the police, something weird like that. I'm not even I wasn't even doing anything, and what I was doing was walking around saying, ah, <laughs> um. So that was my, that's the crime, yeah. Um, but, uh, it, uh, it did, he, it did do what he, what he said. Um, he didn't say that that would fix the, like, like craving any marijuana or something issue, but it, it, it did. I realized afterwards, oh, I don't actually, I don't care that they took my, um, my cigarette thing or whatever. I don't really care that they took that because... I don't, I don't need that, whatever, they can, they can do that, I don't, I don't need that, um, so, I'm um, working on eliminating, yeah, anything from my life that I do not need, and also, that's, like, it was a big drain of money, so, just, um, ask for help for the people, like, uh, a lot of, a lot of people, are gonna be, like, using drugs, like, okay, like, the Yael guy, who did not help me, and we ended up being in this type standoff, um, I walked up to the counter at one point, where he, when he actually was not paying attention, and I caught him sniffing coke, and I caught the person giving it to him, sniffing coke, and this is supposed to be in, like, a type of hospital, right, and the, and the nurse is giving cocaine, he's, like, he's got, you know, his thumb up like this, like, just exactly like sniffing, he's sniffing coke, or speed, and I just did, I just looked away, I didn't say anything, but I was like, oh, how dare you people say anything to me about drugs, how dare you, and you are sniffing coke, um, nah, uh, no, um, oh, and there, there's John Lennon again, no, 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 Lennon, um, I think they've had enough of you saying that you're pissed off at Human Colony, um, don't try to channel John Lennon anymore, or, okay, how do I say don't, don't try to channel John Lennon anymore, um, uh, channel another artist, because John Lennon does not like fake channeling him, he, he really doesn't, he's like, no, I'm gonna tell her the secrets to my songs now, because of you people, 
um, which was like, okay, that's cool, but I didn't exactly ask for that. It was, it was weird. It was random. Just, just do this, and you'll be fine. Just do this. This is, this is, this is why. This is, now you know the secret to I am the walrus. Now you know. You tell Jim that. Now you know the secret to I am the walrus. And that's supposed to be, that's a big deal, because no one knew what I am the walrus meant. And I guess now I'm, like, the one of the first free humans to understand what the, what I am the walrus means, um, and where and when to use I am the walrus, because actually it's a tool. He made it as, you know, his anti-programming gibberish tool so that he could walk around and, and um, keep his focus on something really strongly so that they couldn't distract him away from it. And I've, I've noticed that the total gibberish thing works. That I think that was partly how I thought it was so funny, because I realized, wait, I've been doing the same thing, and here he's doing it like, um, like what I would do is I would say, oh, you guys are going to go have a random orgy. Um, and he says, stupid bloody Tuesday, man, you should have seen them kick in a growl and po. <laughs> um, so, after this, I'm going to figure out what else to do with, with our philosophy. Right now, this is philosophy of transmuting. I was about to say surviving, but it, Quran said, no, it's not surviving. You're, you're, you're going to survive. That's a, that's a no-brainer now at this point. Um, yeah, also, he said he's been saying, he'd been saying this morning, no matter what, um, like, no matter what it feels like, or no matter what it seems like, to you or to them, you will live. No, no matter what it seems like, no matter what thing that could happen, no, no matter what, you will live a long life on this planet. And whenever it ends up becoming time after you've lived a very long life on this planet, um, you'll uh, go, you know, go get to go back to where you came from, which is apparently waking up inside of an incubator type thing, or at a console type thing, but I've noticed that she stays in the incubator now a lot, because, um, yeah, I didn't need someone to tell me that they do that to keep themselves alive, I, I kinda, that was, like, obvious, so I didn't really need someone to tell me that, um, but, uh, but, um, so, seems like this I'll end up going back there at some point but it's not for m like many you're talking decades like he means decades here so everybody who's thinking I'm not gonna make it to the, the age of 28 like cry on that like cry on okay here cry on says no 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 she she's going to live many decades past this. No. She, uh, no, she's not even, you know, what you'd call a real adult, practically, by many people's standards, or by age standards. A lot of people, like, until you're 30, you know, you don't really get called a real adult sometimes. And so he says, no, you're not, you're not just going to make it to the age of 30. You're going to make it way, decades, 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 decades past that. Um, and he also said, look at the um, picture that this was paused on. I don't want to show it because it's so stupid looking. Um, but he said, see, look at the picture and remember what you were wearing in San Francisco? And I said, oh, yeah, I just did that myself, how I put the covering over my head like that. Um, just because it looked cool, or I, like, I wanted something, I wanted a hat, and I couldn't find a hat, so then I thought, oh, this would be cooler, um, and he's, look at the picture of how there's the, there's, well, there's Duke there, and it's funny that his name is Duke, um, that's a joke, um, like, Prince, Duke, King, Queen type thing, um, and there's the other guy, um, his attorney, who, kind of, like, in the, in the still, it looks like, if you just took this still footage, it looks like, um, a guy sitting there with a covering, and, like, he's being waited on, and, um, what Howard, was, no, none of you guys, oh, none of you guys are gonna like this, what Howard kept telling me when I was at somebody's house was, um, 
uh, whenever no one was there and I could actually walk around, he would say, Krista, I want you to walk around and observe how this is done. I want you to observe how he's having other people do everything for him. This is what you, you should have. You should have something that is like this. Um, and then Kron Kron says, look at the picture. See, it's the person being waited on or whatever. And I'm like, okay, well. Uh, it was what, what Howard would point out that was very smart. He would say, see, notice this. Notice how he's getting around this, this impediment, this impediment. Notice how he's getting around this, this, and this. See how he's got this person to do this, this person to do that, this other person to do this. Okay, that's what you need to do, <laughs> what he was telling me. Um, I, except I thought, well, uh, I'm not going to have uh, – well, let's just say weird, weird guards. Um, having weird guards is kind of – yeah, having weird guards. Um, but then, uh, then uh, again – I've kind of gotten my share of being screwed over by Jewish people at this point. Like, now I completely understood what my mom and my grandmother meant when they were saying, Ah, Jewish people! Um, it's not like it's, oh, it's a Jewish person, it's just, like, how they act. Um, but then I guess you could say the same thing about me, so... Fair game, then? Um, and, uh, specifically, my grandmother will go berserk whenever she, whenever she senses a Jewish male who is, um, a sexual predator. <laughs> and she goes berserk and starts saying, Oh, get away, get away! They, she, that, like, the con, like, what my mom said is once some guy said to her, like, shit, it's, it, I don't know how to say it, but shishka, shishka, or whatever, whatever. And some guy said to her, Oh, yeah, shishka, shishkas are for practice. And, and so my mom dumped him, <laughs> saying, like, oh, yeah, the Gentiles are for, like, practice sex, <laughs> is what the guy was saying. And she was like, what? And dumped him. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't, I guess, I guess he shouldn't have said that to a half-German woman. Um, especially in that time, in that, in that time period. That time period, though, that time period, you wouldn't have been able to say anything. Um, and I know that. German ancestry, they completely changed the spelling of their name because they were so scared of the fact that they were German, that if everyone's going to think they were evil when they were trying to flee, you know, the war, because thinking, oh my god, this is crazy, let's get out, um, was was the idea, um, we're going to flee to over to those people, because they seem to be doing it right, was what they were thinking, um, so, I think... Um, well, I suppose eventually that, that'll that happen. Maybe it, maybe it's like another year from now, because it will be coming up a year when I first heard, you know, Howard say the thing to me about, like, a torch. I haven't heard from him in a while, which is good, because I don't like really hearing from him, because that, like, makes a lot of people get antsy or think that I'm not really telling the truth or something. When now you should all know that I did totally tell the truth. Um, and if you think that I was just getting messed around with by technology and numbers, now you can see that the numbers don't work. And Cryon explains that because in a quantum state, they can change just like that. So he's that's why he's saying no matter what it looks like to them they're re they're reading your magnetic field or your your auric field the magnetism of it you know and they can see that and they can see areas of the body some of them are better at it than others but they can see that mostly um, and so no matter what your body actually looks like to them, if it looks like there's a problem wherever, looks like the problem where, where wherever the heck there could be, it looks like could be, there could be a problem. It does not matter. That problem will heal itself. Um, and all you have to do is remember that. No, that doesn't matter. If you literally feel like you're going to die at at that second, your body is going to spontaneously heal from whatever tries to harm you now. Um, and the whole Ashtar command, sit back and enjoy the circus, 
type thing, like Cir Cirque du Soleil. Okay, sit back and enjoy the circus, but the circus ends up being, like, Kill Bill? Weird? So, that's not exactly enjoyable. Um, so I would kind of, uh, I would, I, I want an enjoyable circus. I mean, if reality is going to deconstruct in front of me, it could deconstruct a little bit uh, more fluidly. But, oh, and, but Kryon, Kryon says, that's see, the reason where you are, the reason that things are m moving about slowly the way they are is because you're the only strong energy there holding an anchor for the new frequency, and it's like you fending off everybody else. Um, which, that alone should tell you right there, like, if I'm literally in a complex of hundreds of people, and every single one of them um, has intent for me to die or something, and I am not only not dying, but starting to just walk past their hexes or curses or whatever, they get whatever they do, it's, they do something, it's like, oh, what? Oh, you just said whatever sequence of numbers, what? Oh, you made a click, you know, oh, you knocked your hand on something? Oh, what? Oh, you coughed? Oh, what? Oh, like I said, with, with the coughing thing, I, I've passed people, and I've, I've actually looked at them, and I said, you know that doesn't work anymore, right? <laughs> I, said, I said that once to somebody. In San Francisco, I said that once. Like, you know that doesn't work anymore, right? Um, so, um... But, but also, yeah, uh, that's this tie. That's tactical, so I'm not gonna say that. But I will, I will say this is something that Bashar says. But it's something that was told to me before I heard Bashar say it, even though Bashar technically said it first. But so it was information that I did not read from Bashar. Um, and also, so I've I've said before, Arcturians are kind of similar, in a way, um, to Gray Yael type. And so Bashar was saying. Um, you, uh, you have the opportunity to course correct, and what I kept getting told in the middle of the intercept thing, when I would get told, why the heck am I getting all this weird, all this, all this stuff got wrong, and then this happened, and this happened, oh my gosh, um, and I would get told, it's okay, we course correct very well, we course correct very well, and that was the exact phrase, we course correct very well, like, um, it was like I had been deliberately meandered around on this bizarre course to throw people off the trail so that I could be right in the right place at the right time and figure things out exactly right before something would have happened um, and change it around. And so Bash and Bashar basically says the same thing, that you have this opportunity to course correct, and, and now I'm like, okay, well, Bashar, you know who's the better course corrector right now? Because you kind of predicted the whole thing. Like, that's how I need to look for Agenda 21, because he talked about it somewhere. And now I'm sure if I look for that, what, it's going to be erased or something. <laughs> um, that that was how I ended up, like, looking at that, because, like, Bashar said, oh, at the end of August, there's going to be, like, some, like, bombing, basically. And, oh, it didn't happen, Bashar, because of me, I, apparently, not me, but... Um, a lot of me doing stuff um, and whatever general intent of other people, but it was like there weren't other people actively thinking, okay, I know this is real here, and I am actively trying to stop it like a military tactician. There was, it was like, there was, it's like I was the only person really trying to actually do that somehow or really actively doing it. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Um, and, uh, what, what, they keep telling me the phrase, look, um, just kind of keep them at, yeah, to keep them at the arm's length, you know, you can't hate them or anything, keep them at arm's length, you can't, you know, they're, they're cute and everything, you can't, you know, and they, how they like to study you and everything is cute, it's so cute, so cute, so adorable, um, because, oh, trust us, we love studying you too, but, it, we, you know, we don't, we, 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 don't, we don't make you look like an experiment, and when they would accidentally start talking like I was an experiment, I would say, hey, and, and, um, they would say, oh, 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 well, we're sorry, we're, we're, we're sorry, we're sorry, we're our, 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 our beautiful Earth Queen, we're sorry, um, like, they would forget for a second there, um, 
but uh, and the shark tripped me because I, I first thought huh, something seems wrong with this Bashar character. He's not saying what star he's from, he's not saying what he is, that's that's weird. After this long, you wouldn't be saying that stuff. You could say the stuff in the 90s, like I am what you'd call extraterrestrial. You could say that in the 90s. Um, now I think he actually described, he's actually d described stuff, but this was back before he described anything, really, or it was probably hard to find. Um, and so I tried just directly asking him, what are you? And he said, I am what you call extraterrestrial, like, just like what on the website. And I was like, uh, I'm extraterrestrial too, so what kind? <laughs> Hello? Hello? Um, and, um, he just didn't really say anything or try kind of to change the subject. And I said, well, look, what star do you hail from? And I phrased that, what star do you hail from then? And then he just didn't talk at all. And so I said, well, whatever. I got up and then immediately fell over. Um, and it was a kind of fall where I, it was like I almost could have been harmed, but deliberately wasn't, is what it felt like. And so I got up and I um, said, did you do that? And I heard back, yes. And I, I said, okay, why did you do that? And he said, to, to demonstrate my presence. And so I said, um... Why did your demonstration involve violence? And then it was like someone, like an angry kid, um, throwing a chessboard over. <laughs> like, oh man, oh, ah, ah. And then I tried to type on like the above top secret website, oh, I think there's something wrong with Bashar. And my phone started to do weird stuff. And I didn't know at the time the extent of weird stuff that could happen with your phone. <laughs> Um, so it was very minor weird stuff, just, you know, people messing with the cursor a little bit, you know, making it hard to type, and I actually type it there on above top secret, I type it in there, um, that after typing this amount of information, the cursor thing, this began to happen on my phone, now I'm doing this, and I'm having to do it this way in order to type, it was so hard to type, um, and, yeah, now I, now I see there's a lot more stuff that can be done to your phone, but the best type of phone to have, you don't want that to happen, is these, like, low tech, the low tech type thing, um, the too low tech Doctor Who thing, so the more high tech, quote high tech as we think of it with just like AC, because we're still using AC because we're stupid, or uh, not because we're stupid, because the elite people are stupid, um, and need to get kicked in the balls <laughs> by the general population to um, use the better the, the better technology that we do definitely have or else there wouldn't be tri black triangular shaped crafts flying above my house and that um, I already knew that that was us like us our military when our military gets really serious um, so when uh, I ended up hearing after the thing where I just knew something was up with Bashar I didn't know what he was but I just knew something was up with you whatever it is your information seems right but whatever's up with you something's weird um and he described, uh, and also I was like, your accent, something, something's up with that accent, even though I got shown that I, there's a, like, I could potentially choose to be a, a hybrid Ple Pleiadian in Scotland for my next life if I wanted to, something like that. Um, uh, so with, with, um, Bashar there, um, he says, um, he's asked, when did you first see a craft, or when did you first see a UFO? And he says, well, it's a, it's a triangle. And immediately I started pointing at the phone and saying, U.S., that's, uh, that's, 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 that's us, that's us, that's the U.S., it's us. Practically, or not even the U.S., but it's, that's, that's Earthling-based. Because we don't use the cooler technology yet, apparently. We just use the, we, we use the triangle shape because we, you know, managed to figure out that far or trade, or whatever that far. Um, basically, technology for blood is what we're trading. That's the deal. Like, okay, gray and reptilian guys, uh, trade us technology, and we'll trade you our people that you can just steal and experiment on and possess. And then, okay, we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll not, I don't think they were thinking we'll go along with the world domination thing. There was the secret societies that wanted to go along with it, but the general population obviously didn't. But then the general population 
um, was being made stupefied, and it was only, you know, some some people that managed to figure out that something was just wrong um, with what was going on. Um, so I'm going to think about being waited on like uh, the person over, like they're like the picture on the, on the TV screen over here. And oh, I think maybe I'm awake enough to watch Snubakash, so that's quick cash. Um, I don't know what it is, like that that one that was being pointed out to me repeatedly that it, it, I would just hear it's like snobakash it's like snobakash the random voice saying it's like snobakash um it's like the movie like the movie like watch that movie um and you might find something in there um so oh well the movie's about and I was thinking what is what could that be about but the movie's about this kid who's in college and he's he comes from a poor area of Sweden, way up in the north where there's like nobody in the middle of nowhere. Um, like where there's um, sun all in the summertime and it's like one hour of sun in the winter time. Um, and he comes down to Stockholm and is, uh, or wait, were they on the, that on the border? I can't remember, I can't remember. Um, Oh, the other one is the border one. The other, the other one. Um, this, yeah, I, I have it right. Um, so the kid, the the kid is like, ends up getting taken in by this mafia, basically, not really totally knowing what he's doing, at first, huh? So and then then realizes that he's in the mafia, um, when it's like, uh oh, wait, I'm in the mafia, and I okay, and there's this. Huh, there's a Snabakash too, and then that, that if I watch that, because I, I know the obvious beginning of that is the guy waking up in jail, because the, the movie, I think, ends with him in prison or something. Like, the movie begins with some guy escaping from prison. Um, okay, like this prison imagery. Alright, yeah, there's something to the movie, okay. Um, so, I'll go, I'll go watch the, the sub, like, I have to be awake to be able to watch the subtitles, because I can understand the Swedish but I really have to be watching and paying attention to understand it. I can't understand all of it. I can only just understand, you know, the gist of things. Um, so now I really need the subtitles. <laughs> so I'm going to do that and talk to people later through my phone or however I do it on Arcturian Philosophy. Blessings to you all.